I've lived near um, a river for like four years now and I feel super fortunate to be by the river but I've not used it for anything. One scrolling day through hot UK deals I found uh, inflatable kayaks were not that expensive while still being pretty legit so I bought a two-person inflatable kayak and I took it for a test run in Wales. Got on the lake, took my friend on, we, we went around, we started paddling out and then uh, someone came and stopped us and was like you can't you can't paddle on this lake it's private and it's full of poisonous algae which was great because we've been covered in water at that point so anyway um i then took the kayak uh, into the river next to me and uh within five minutes we got stopped by <laughs> the harbour guard and they were like yeah you need a license to uh, be on this kayak and we we're like oh here we go again they had a contactless machine and we paid for a 24-hour license um one of the reasons i bought this kayak actually was on the bottom of the kayak there's a thing called a, a skeg which is basically like a little rudder that keeps it going straight and because I build loads of combat robots, I was like, well, I've got quite a lot of motors, batteries, speed controllers. I really should motorize this thing. Um, but I had a look around and on AliExpress, I discovered there was a clip-in motor for quite cheap and uh, found on Thingiverse um, for a 3D printed replacement skeg for my kayak. So I printed out uh, an adapter, luckily fit first time, but it was a bit weak. So I did 100% infill for the second print. That was all good. I then took a trip to Wilco's and f fortunately found a waterproof plug housing. Removed the plug and shoved the, the speed controller that came with the motor into there. That was sort of the end of that bit. I borrowed a battery from our combat robot who had a Deflamingo, <laughs> shoved it in. Um, it seemed to work all right, so I took it out on the water with, with Gareth, uh, my brushless enthusiast friend. Hello, you're, you're live from within my waterproof box, so there's a bit of things that you can hear behind me. Here we go, we're going again. That's, about, that's all it will give at the moment. Oh yeah, that's, that's some good speed. We are in the tunnel. Can you do a clap for me, Gareth? Because I can't do it. Oh, it wasn't as good this end, was it? Nah, we got to get cracking. So we're on sort of maybe a third speed at the moment. This is what it's like cruising along. I think this is quite a reasonable speed. All right, we're cruising at full speed right now using leaning to turn. It's working quite nicely, actually. We're getting quite, we're getting pretty. This is the speed we're going at right now. We're actually carving up the water a little bit. <laughs> right, let's tilt to the right a bit. I'm not convinced, I think it's veering left of it. And a little battery detector and that uh, with a low voltage warning and that was going off just as we came back. So one battery could get us about a kilometer out and then a kilometer back, let's see. So yeah, the, the kayak kind of veered sideways quite a lot. Um, but the mount, the mount hold held, and um, the motor would start to struggle. Um, it was sort of whining and, and kind of lowering in pitch. Um, and then when we looked at the speed controller, it had severely overheated. So um, I took one of the Vesks, which is like a skateboard speed controller that we use in our combat robots, plugged one in, had a go at reprogramming it, and I rewired the circuit to run two of these four amp hour LiPo batteries. So I had a bit larger distance. Um, and this time I took my girlfriend Sam out on the river. She was less uh, keen to go fast, shall we say. I'm using my 360 cam and set it to time-lapse mode by accident. So here are some time-lapses. Looks really cool, but it doesn't really give you an idea of how the motor was functioning. definitely worked better, didn't really get a sense of range. So then I was like, well, I need to give this a proper test, you know. So I took it out a third time with my friend Adam. He went in his own kayak. We, we picked out a really nice spot of river. So I'm on the boat. There is Adam for scale. 
Sorry about the blurriness, it's in the waterproof bag. This is how I go straight at the moment. This is how to go straight. Yeah, we're sort of cruising along at Adam speed. There you go. One-handed kayaking down the canal. Or is it the river? Is this the Avon? Probably went for about 15 minutes and then my the remote ran out of battery this time. So I was like, okay, fine. It's becoming winter now. We're nearly in October. It's getting cold and wet. Um, so it's this evening, uh, the last sunny day of this week and it's just rain. Um, I took it out solo, um, managed to carry the kayak and all the gear just about on my own. And I recorded the entire journey this time. <laughs> Yay! Woo! Who's got the better party boat here, you know? <laughs> Good run, 20 minutes there, 20 minutes back in the kayak. Success. So yeah, I felt like this is a pretty cool project. Probably that's it till winter now, for winter now, because it's cold and wet and miserable in the UK. Um, it was really fun and it's really fun to ride in and I'm gonna take loads of other people in it when it gets sunny again. Surprisingly reliable for something that I built. So pretty proud of it. Catch you in the next thing, which will probably be combat robots because that's, that's what I normally do. But you know, goodbye.